Hello, Internet! It's that time of year again. Assuming you actually watched this video around the time I release it, which is very unlikely. But if you are, Christmas is well on the way, it's all very exciting. If I could actually animate stuff, I'd be making it snow right now. Eh, that was a poor effort, Doc. Anyhow, I'm not sure what I'm getting so excited about, as I've reached that age where everybody can suddenly scrimp out on your Christmas without feeling bad about it. And of course, there's always the most painful feature of the season to contend with, the Christmas music. You all want to complain about Frozen score? Why not? But what gives these dime a dozen songs the right to bore into our subconscious every year in the name of Christmas spirit or whatever? Humbugs for everyone! So, like with many of life's trivial annoyances, I look to the world of video games for some much-needed respite. Which maybe isn't the best way of dealing with your problems. So then, ice levels. Quite a common sight on the video game scene, and not a particularly popular one to be sure. Nobody likes slipping and sliding all over the place, but you can't deny that the wintry aesthetic in some of these places is pretty appealing, and contributing nicely to that is, naturally, the background music. So to celebrate one of the best holidays out there, I'll be giving it the playlist it deserves and taking a look-see at my favourite pieces of music from winter-themed levels. An important thing to note is that unlike the Halloween one I did, I won't be limiting myself to music that's just festively oriented this time. Christmas feel-good music or genuinely chilling ambience, it doesn't matter. As long as it's easily identifiable as wintry in tone, it's an eligible candidate. Which is the literal only reason why Seashore Wolf from Tropical Freeze doesn't find itself placed squarely at the top of this list. So, sorry about that. Besides that, only one entry per franchise for a little bit of variety, and I'll leave you an on-screen link whenever I introduce a new entry. And with any luck, this will be able to purge your auditory palette of all of those Christmas songs, too. So, if that's everything... Let's go! Let it go! But, but I, I didn't even say anything! Go. Ah! Now's not really the time to sour things with how I feel about Pokemon X and Y. I'm not going to turn around and say they're bad by any means, but still, in spite of all the bells and whistles attached to these games, there are many areas, soundtrack included, where I felt things were conspicuously lacking compared to other generations. But then, late in the game, you find yourself in Snowbell City, and suddenly none of that matters as one of the few outstanding pieces of music in these games greets you letting you know that X and Y still has more to give. Since this music doesn't play in a level per se, rather the quite small area of the city, it is pretty short before it loops. But what meets your ears as you enter your final stretch is just... nice. Almost enough to counter having to trape through Pokémon's response to the forest maze straight after. This whole song has a sort of calming influence on me. I can't describe it very well, but the whole rhythm has a sort of slowly swaying, meandering kind of feeling. It really does feel like Christmas morning every time we enter the city. The light chimes, the sprinkling of piano, the surprisingly dulcet trumpet sound, the instruments I can't actually place, all of it. It's just the nicest thing to take a moment, slow down, and be met with a song so soothing and pleasant as you near the end of your adventure. Yep, we're setting the bar high right from the beginning, it seems. Leave it to Banjo-Kazooie to bring on the good feelings. Just about any song in its library is capable of such. And this one's a fast-paced, bouncy romp through the snowball fight-filled festivities of Easy Easy Peak with Grant Kirkhope's instrumental fingerprints all over it. Every instrument in this song sounds happy, I mean, what do you expect? Banjo-Kazooie's musical style was made for this sort of thing. The assortment of horns proclaiming joy to the world, the energetic violin, those little bells you hear in everything Christmas-related, which I will henceforth call snowflake bells because I think it rather fits and it's way easier. And as far as I'm aware, not a kazoo in sight. Oh well. Of course, they've included some sound effects, too. The icy wind is constantly howling in the background, but if you are like most of the kids gallivanting about this land of festive chaos for the first time, then you're not paying too much attention to that. Far more to climbing a snowman the size of a tower block to the sounds of Christmas cheer and all that whatever. You ain't good at the whole overwhelmingly positive bit, are you? Ah, 
Yeah, no, no, you're right about that. What can I say? Banjo Kazooie music and Christmas music fits so well together it's hard to see where one begins and the other ends. The only reason I can really give for it showing up so low on the list is there are a whole load of good pieces to get through and I just like them better. That's literally it. I swear this one per franchise disclaimer only exists in my videos because of this game. As once again, Wario Land Shake It has barged in and upstaged every other eligible candidate from the Mario franchise. I really was considering Super Mario 64, I really was, but I'm still unrepentant. This be my personal preference, nothing more. Iconic value can go get buried under an avalanche of Christmas greed. Wario is coming to town. <laughs> 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 eh. Well, that sure can't be down. Slips, slipshots, slips, <laughs> slipshot sloops does a similar thing to Bad Manor in how it trades the game's usual musical style to really drive home the thematics instead. You're Wario, you're here to do what you want, shake down some penguins and steal all the money. And yet you walk into this level and it just makes you stop, cause once more it feels like you just walked into Christmas morning. Wario's funky beat's been replaced by a slow and outright soothing little number, featuring those bells like snowflakes and some of the most beautiful arrangement of stringed things Mario can ever lay claim to. It's just... nice. I already said that. Nicer by far than Snowbell City. That trumpet. I swear, that trumpet. It's short, but it just sounds quietly triumphant. I don't know. It all just mashes into such a good feeling. The whole thing just radiates a quiet contentedness. It really throws you for a loop compared to the rest of the game. You just want to frolic in this beautiful level and open your gift and spread goodwill and peace to all men. In this instance, I think the level's default music is definitely the best, but whatever, it's Christmas. I'll give you a link to the escape music too. I admit it does feel kinda bad to have one of my favorite songs from this game so low on my own list, but still, it's plenty good enough to render me completely remorseless about failing to showcase Mario properly. Again. Cool Cool Mountain gives me a headache anyway. Castle Crashes is one of the best indie games going, and that's saying a lot. And as to be expected, its music is really something else. It brought Newgrounds composers from all over the place together to contribute to the soundtrack, ranging everywhere from headbanging, epic, super happy, headbanging. However, putting aside all the amazing talented people I've never heard of before this game, we have a little number composed by a guy called Cicer... Cicerin... Cicerarin? Aptly titled Winter Blitz. This song's pretty unique compared to its wintry brethren, probably because while it does succeed on the cold-inducing atmosphere sort of deal, it still keeps perfectly in tune with everything Castle Crashes is really about, kicking more ass than everyone else. I had a really hard time commenting on this. I mean, my knowledge on music is atrocious as is, and in this one, there aren't even really any instruments to latch onto and say, that sounds like this and it's good, because it's all more or less indeterminate noise. But one thing I can't really miss is that this winter wonderland has some really powerful bass pulsing through it. And yet for all that side of this stuff, it isn't outright rave music or whatever. There's still some underlying ambience that oddly fits. It could be the strings playing quietly behind all the pounding CG sound, along with the faint, almost whistling chimes that echo along with it. And of course, the veritable flurry of violins at one point all working towards an image of serenity and beauty that blends together with all the booming weirdness to make something just amazing. I'm not sure what style of music that technically is, but I love it. I hope it doesn't turn out to be trance. That'd be... problematic. By the way, it's so much fun to listen to. Enough for me to like it more than a fair amount of songs coming up that are technically better. It's something you can just get pumped up to, but also savor its incredible composition at the same time. 
there's just so much going on here and it can just overwhelm you and lose yourself in oh my god it really is trance isn't it okay I guess I'll just go reevaluate everything I thought about myself and my tastes don't wait for me next entry Well, Merry Christmas to me! I get to talk about this game too? In case you don't know it, Bravely Default is honestly one of the best games you could possibly own for 3DS. Out with the dysfunctional MMOs and obnoxious angsty blocks of wood and in with one of the best turn-based RPGs ever to come from that island of mad geniuses. Square Enix really pulled through for us with this one. Stick around this channel long enough and I can guarantee you'll hear me singing its praises many more times. But for now at least I'll settle for this game has good music to burn. This is but one gem in the vast treasure hoard of Bravely Default soundtrack. Regardless, one of the moments that struck me the most during my playthrough was when you first hear this song, titled The Immortal Country, heralding Adia's not-so-happy homecoming. Something so serene and oddly mournful isn't really what you'd expect to hear playing in the heartland of your enemy, yet here it is, and it really gives you pause for thought. Out of context, it's a fine piece to be sure. Its slow pace and melody, delivered predominantly by those little chimes and snowflake bells, brings the icy chills, but something of the melancholy of the song really strikes a chord with your in-game situation. idea has been driven to fight against her own country and family, so to land on Eternian soil to such a melancholy number gives you a sort of auditory idea of how difficult this is for her. And then this song has a sort of crescendo, where a whole host of flutes and stringed instruments and a steady percussion come together, and it just sounds brilliant. You can hear this nation's pride, but also its pain, and along with everything else you've witnessed before and while you're there, it really makes you start to think that you shouldn't be fighting these people. Even more so as the game delves further into the history of Eternia. Not to spoil too much, but this place has had it rough. The initial effect of your first visit is a pretty powerful one, although you end up having to return to this place multiple times after that because this game has more padding than your grandma for wrapping up the winter, if she played American Death Ball. But because you learn more about the places you go, I don't think this music loses any effect with multiple visits. In fact, it might only get more poignant. I mentioned the wider variety for a reason, you know. This list is going to go all over the emotional spectrum. Sounds like a load of hot air to me. Hmm, maybe. But as I say, this music still has an enjoyable icy ambience without all that. Well, that's just my reason for personally liking it more than the others. 